it's possibly the the commonest human urge to move you know change uh, uh, change the change one's life for what one has for better or something i'm interested in looking at the pursuit of that uh, within the context of one country india i'm neil mukherjee i'm the author of three novels a life apart the lives of others and now a state of freedom this new book a state of freedom is in five sections and the sections are of differing length and the sections don't join in any obvious way not all the sections join either um and if you think of a novel written in sections one of the most obvious recent examples would be cloud atlas uh by david mitchell where things are joined up very intelligently but subtly and meticulously and i have resisted that principle entirely and i wanted to uh uh the uh, i wanted to have a principle of incoherence in the book rather than a principle of coherence although it coheres in other ways in my mind um i wanted to write a, a novel with all the connective tissue taken out So uh if you think of the realist novel and if you think what makes it cohere and what gives it continuity it's things such as plot and character and development of characters uh psychological development and I wanted to take all those things out and see if we could still have something that would answer to the name of novel so um it is a formal experiment um and yet in my head i it it is a novel and i would like my readers also to think of it as a novel but they will bring other kinds of meanings to why it is a novel there are no the, there are no neat answers i think you know there's a construction worker in section 1 could it be the construction worker from whose point of view you see section 5 you don't know so i i have tried to build connections in sort of less uh uh overdetermined ways so also to give the reader a lot of freedom in the way they bring meaning to a book so i feel reading should be a very interactive process and not a process where a writer just gives the reader brings meaning to a book too so i was very uh, i i i was conscious about doing that and and at the end i hope uh, uh readers will also get a sense of uh how um i i i was taking on the notion of movement of people um which one can see at once as freedom because they are free to move movement implies a certain kind of freedom but movement also implies a certain kind of constraint so there are vast numbers of people who move in the world because um they face certain constraints where they are either economic constraints or political constraints where their lives have become nothing and they want to have a better life and in the hope of a better life they move uh but that movement is that movement is caused by a certain kind of constraint so i wanted to have all this kind of meditation underpinning this 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 book so that provides another spine of meaning if you will to to the novel uh at, at a time when the immigrant novel has become such a stereotype in the west whenever people talk about migrants we always think of oh right you know somebody who comes uh or is a second generation or a first generation immigrant someone who comes from one place and tries to make a, a home in another and these novels are all novels about assimilation or the fractures of assimilation uh uh or the miscegenation that 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 assimilation involves um and i'm not interested in writing that kind of book at all um uh, that kind of novel is marred by i feel nostalgia uh and also that endless hankering for mummy's cooking kind of novel it doesn't do anything for me I was more interested in looking at like it's a internal migration in India this this book is not about uh uh people leaving the country and coming to the west and finding a great life or not finding a great life which is what the immigrant novel has become uh and I was looking at you, you know vast numbers of people in within a country also move 
in order for, like you know mostly for say jobs or something and they make a life in a, in a different place and india is a country which has 25 or 27 languages and to move from one region to another is in some ways to move to a foreign land actually and these are all languages they're not dialects of each other and 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 people migrate from rural rural, rural areas to cities to find jobs um, and i wanted to look at what that kind of movement meant, a kind of economic migration within the borders of one country. So yes, m movement and change interest me a lot. And, um, and uh, in a way, you know, the form of the uh, book in five sections, I was having a conversation with a great novel, if it's not too hubristic to say this, is this is my conversation with V.S. Naipaul's 1971 uh, masterpiece, In a Free State, uh, which is also about displacement and migration. And it's in five sections. There are two novellas and one slightly longer novella with the title In a Free State, and it's bookended by a prologue and an epilogue. And not a single of those sections will join. They are not, they are not joined by plot or characters then you begin to think what brings them together, why is it called a novel. He called it a novel with two supporting narratives. Uh, that, that formally is very interesting for me. And I feel uh, um, perhaps the novel should, formally should reflect the experience of migration and the unraveling that it inherently causes, it should reflect that, in, that formally too. Uh, so here's my book in five sections that don't obviously join in any ways.